Casey, Benny Ross, Edwards, the flag man here tonight. It was his decision on that last one. We'll see if he likes this next one a little bit better. And we're green. Oh, some bumping and banging in there as they came up the front straightaway. Hilleberg comes out with the lead. Mark Kinzer, Stevie Smith, Steve Kinzer, Gertie, Whitey, Hot and Shield, and Lasoski. That's how they stretch out. There you go, on board with Joe Gertie. Coming up the front stretch. This is where they go into turn one, right under the tires. They run uphill coming out of turn two, there just a little bit. And he basically lifted all the way through turns one and two, didn't he? Doesn't yeah. get on the gas until he get up, out of it. Yeah, the track is uh, a little black in place, a little slick, as you see Kinzer and Stevie Smith from 19 up on the top. Uh, right now, they're just working the track in. It'll get faster as we go along here. Steve Kinzer, that green number 11, the Quaker State car, that is the fight for fourth position with Gertie right behind him. And here comes Dave Blaney on board now. Danny Lasoski. See Joe Gertie tried to get the inside of Steve Kinzer in the 11 car as Blaney goes around the outside. See how close they got Ralph for that. Remember, no mirrors in these things. Kinzer doesn't know Blaney's there. That is close. Blaney's, Blaney's car is working right now. Oh, coming together again down in turns one and two. It actually looked like Blaney might have clipped the inside tires a little bit too. Look at Kinzer's car standing up. Now this is a race just for position of the, of the feature lineup. This race doesn't pay much. The main event pays 10,000 to win. They got to get into that. Jackard flag is out. It falls to Hillenberg, Stevie Smith, and the rest. So Andy Hillenberg in the STP number two. We saw how strong he ran last night. In our highlights, and he looks like he's right there again tonight. Andy Hillenberg runs the McCrary tire, and most people will tell you that this racetrack suits the McCrary tire better than just about anywhere else on the tour. Of course, the other tire of choice on the Penzo World of Outlaw Tour on a regular basis is the Goodyear Eagles. Let's go downstairs to Dave Reef, who's standing by with our Vibrant Dash winner. I am standing down here, Bobby Jackson, World Outlaw official, getting ready to slap on the Vibrant hat as uh, Andy Hillenberg takes off the STP helmet. He's out of the race car. Andy, dominating performance. Looks like the outside's a place to be. Well, it was then. I think there's some black coming off the four down there, and uh, Mark, he busted the tires loose, and I got a little bit of jump on him, so that probably helped us out a little bit. I don't really know how close he was, though. Well, the McCreary's really like this racetrack, don't they? Yeah, McCreary tires, you know. I like them all the time. That's a brand I prefer, and uh, they do real well here at Dallas, but I tell you what, it takes a bunch of other people to keep this thing going, you know, my crew, and uh, they work real hard during the week, and we got our, you know, the sponsors that make everything possible, and uh, STP Racing, John Christner Trucking, and Rush Truck Centers, that all kind of kind of makes everything happen, so we're good to have them along with us, and good to be here tonight. He's 30 laps away from a $10,000 check. He'll be sitting on a pole for tonight's A-Main. That's Andy Hill. And let's show you the results of that vibrant dash. As you see, Andy getting the win. Mark Kinzer, Stevie Smith, Dave Blaney, and Steve Kinzer. Of course, that's how they'll line up for the A feature. Let's go back downstairs to Bobby Gerald. Well, the next item of business, guys, will be the C-Main, and only two will move on. The pole setter will be Rick Zeal of New Mexico. And Rick, what about this racetrack tonight? Is it to your liking? Yeah, kind of bit us early on. We didn't expect it to be this moist. It's a lot better than it was last night. He's going to be fun to watch in this good-looking purple chassis. Now, you know that you're going to have a bunch of guys here all chomping at the bit. You're the pole sitter. What kind of pace are you expecting to, to bring them down to? It should be a good, clean, quick pace, and hopefully we'll be there to get to the B and on to the A. All right, we'll be watching Rick Zeal starting on the pole in the C main, and that's coming up next. Rick Zeal, the former champion of Southern New Mexico Speedway, ready to go racing. Is Andy Hillenberg's STP number two. It'll cool down, get some new tires, and ready to go racing. In the future, when we come back. Welcome back to Devil's Bowl Speedway. We're high up in that media center there, back behind the grandstands. But Brad, they've made a lot of changes to this racetrack. Yeah, they have. They've moved the infield tires out to keep people out of the infield, and it's narrowed the track up somewhat. You heard Andy Hillenberg talking about a little bit of black and. Uh, Mark Kinzer busting his tires loose. It is starting to get a little shiny black. Last night, it got shiny black and then got some rubber down. Uh, whether it'll do that tonight or not, only time will tell. Hey, you see those big white tires? Now, Lanny Edwards, who runs this track, took a lot of trees out from back here, didn't he? Yeah, and moved the back straightaway out a little bit. Then, uh, yeah, there was a line of trees all the way down back through there, so it's kind of like running out through the woods. Don't mind seeing those disappear, No, do not at all. That's a good thing they're gone. Sprint cars running into trees is not a good thing when you're strapped inside one of these race cars. <laughs> 
Well, let's head down to Bobby Gerald in the infield. Well, guys, you know what? When you're all qualified for the A main, you don't have to worry too much about the C main. Look at this. Here at the concession stand is Lance Blevins. Lance, what's for dinner, man? Oh, well, uh, I think I'm going to get a Sprite and a bean burrito. Bean burrito, is that going to make you faster in tonight's A main? I don't know if I want to touch that one. Yeah, you do. I'm just trying to pack a little lunch. Hurry up and get the race over with. Maybe I can go to the front faster like that. All right, Lance. Good luck to you, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Lance Blevins, one of the young stars. Well, Lance Blevins has already had a pretty big night tonight. Sounds like he might have a more interesting one as we progress on through the evening. Let's show you the heat highlights from earlier today so you get up to speed with what your favorite driver has already done. Pennzoil World of Outlaws kicking things off with heat number one. Craig Delansky in the 2D had quite a battle, but not with Randy Kinzer in the black car. The 8H was the one who gave him all the fits. That's Terry McCarl's new ride. Craig Delansky goes in, slid, slides up over the cushion a little bit, gets a wide open shot. McCarl goes by on the inside. Terry would take the pass there for the lead. He would hang on and take the win. Delansky was second, Blaney was third. Now we move on to heat number two. In this one, up top, it's the 97 car of Aaron Berryhill. Flying by on the bottom. This is a driver we expect to see big things out of here, and he proved it in heat number two. Gary Wright out front and just disappeared. Gary Wright has won a lot of races here. He knows his way around this racetrack. Jeff Swindell would then come up to challenge Barry Hill. He takes second place away from Aaron. That would hold on to that position. Gary Wright would end up taking the win. Swindell would be second. Joe Grady would move into third. Barry Hill in the fourth, the final transfer. Beat number three. On the inside, the green and white number one F out of Ohio, Gene Jacobs in the Frigidaire back car. He was the dominant factor in this one. The pair of ones going at it here. Sammy Swindell in the blue number one. And the two, Danny Lasoski, the 1W, battling in the back. Team Jacobs would take the win. Craig Hodden in second. Sammy would beat Danny to the line. That would be the fight for third and fourth. And finally, heat number four. Rainey Hannigan led him to the line in the 1X. But it was Lance Blevins just before the hot dog stand. Moving out into the lead in the 21 car, the Sitco machine. Looking at Hannigan and Jack Hottenshield going at it for second place. Hot on the bottom in the yellow 22, the Pennzoil car. Coming up on the inside. Hod would then come up to challenge Blevins. Watch this fight down in three. To the outside goes Hod. That was a bold move, too. He hung it way up on the edge out there. He took a big chance, but he got it done. Hod would win it. Blevins would be second. Tony Crawford third in the hurricane. Randy Hannigan finished fourth in heat number four. And now the C-Main out on the racetrack. So we've got you all up to speed. Now let's introduce you to the players here. C-Main row one, Rick Seal and Dan Dietrich in the 4D. And row two will be Ray Campbell and Tommy Johnson with that unique looking 22T. Uh, row three is Brian Smith, David Chappell. Row four, Mike Reynolds and Mallory Armfield. In the row five, you've got Jeff Mitrison and Jane Burns. And row six, Ricky Jennings, Dodie Miller. Running up the back, Larry Hartwell. You know, Dan Dietrich, we mentioned, is a Wilmot Speedway regular, not to be confused with the Dan Dietrich from Pennsylvania. Let's go downstairs to Dave Reed. Guys, we talk all the time about how most of the outlaw drivers are our big family, but there are some guys out here tonight that don't have sprint car backgrounds. Case in point, the 5J car, Jeff Matrician, comes out of Oskaloosa, Iowa, with a huge IMCA modified background. He's a track champion, darn near won a national championship. And how good has he been in a sprint car? Well, he's won once already at Knoxville, so he's a good driver. Ten laps here with our C main. Two cars transferring onto the back of the B. Got one in the fence coming out of four, but he's, that had to have done some damage. Well, we got one around anyway, the 10X of Hartwell, looping it here in turn number one. And I believe that was the 50 car that got into the wall, if I'm not mistaken, Brad. I think that was Chapel in the 50 car, David Chapel out of Tallala, Oklahoma. Now there's the 10X of Larry Hartwell out of Pasadena, Texas. Ever been on one of those places? I don't think so. 
David Chappell, a three-time Tulsa Speedway champion, struggling on the front straightaway here is, is the 10X of Hartwell. Now watch, we're going to show you what happened to Chappell as he came to the green flag. And there's a lot of bumping and banging as you come up those front straightaways, so it's not unusual to see a guy get pushed out like that. Well, like I mentioned in the opener, it's pretty narrow, and that wall comes up real fast out of turn four. He's right behind the 22 there, just gets up in the loose, and bang, hits the wall. Yeah, he didn't get bumped by anybody but himself, nope, did he? Nope, just got up there, and luckily, you see everybody on the inside scrambling around. I don't know uh, how the 10 car got turned around yet, but you see everybody just moving and fighting and uh, getting their way through there. The 50 car, he'll be... Uh, He's still on the racetrack, but it had to bend a wheel and uh, knock some things out of alignment back there. 10X seems to be okay. Hartwell out of Pasadena. All right, back line to begin. Coming up out of the C feature is just about as tough as it gets. It really is. I mean, if you get out of this thing, then you go to the back of the B main, and that's where your faster cars generally are. You know, you might get halfway up through the field in the B main, and you get the real fast cars toward the front. It's really tough back there. If you're a real astute follower of the World of Outlaws, you might notice something different about these cars on the exhaust pipes. They're running mufflers here. Some places they have to run mufflers. It's 100 dBA at 100 feet. Just It's a noise level, and uh, they have to meet that. Not too many places where you see them. One of those, of course, California. Yeah. Bobby Gerald, what's going on down in the pits? Well, one thing about sprint car racing, especially you'll find in the C-Main, a lot of second generation equipment. For instance, in the Zero car of Brian Smith, he has a Westmar engine that was originally run by Dean Jacobs. It is now uh, in the Zero car, and it's been rebuilt by Gertie. So it's a Westmar Gertie that went from one car to another. And probably one of the oldest cars is that 22 car in there, the Blue Machine. 1984 chassis. Home-built chassis. He built it himself and it's still around. But he's racing the C feature at Devil's Bowl as we go back to green. You might have saw the 50 car back there doing the wheelies and dancing around. I thought he was going to get in the wall again, but this time he uh, stayed away from it. Well, they all get through turns one and two, racing down the back stretch and sliding down into turn three. And there's the 22 you talked about, the blue car. Kind of a unique frame, uh, unique wing situation. Rick Zeal leading this one as you're watching the battle back for third right now. The six car holding on to that position, Ray Campbell right now. Whoa, we got, oh boy. Up over, can he see? But he's on the throttle, he's gonna keep it running. That's the one R of Mike Reynolds and he keeps it going and he flops it we're, back up onto the racetrack, but we got another yeah, car around we're over in turn three. We're gonna get a yellow anyway, which, which helps him because he should get his spot back. He never stopped. The yellow came out for another car, so he'll get his spot back. And I believe it's your buddy David Chappell over there in the 50 car. Yes, it Boy, is. He's just not having too good a night. Well, you know, when he hit that wall, he might have knocked the suspension a little bit loose, and that might have cost him from there. Well, here's the first incident. The number one hit really, really lucky that... Uh, he went right up and over the back of the six. Look, and he got it all the way up under the rear nerf bar, didn't he? You know, you, you might say he did a, a great job of, uh, of saving it. You know, it's amazing what you can do with your eyes closed. But, uh, more luck there, I think, than anything, that, that that thing came down on all four wheels and didn't flip. That is amazing. See his head bounce. I mean, that's a jolt coming down and, and uh, off the racetrack he goes. Again, no clutches on these things, no starters. Keeping your foot in it is exactly See, see the rear tire to. spinning? He's, he's on the throttle now. He's keeping the engine running. Now, had the yellow not come out for the 50 car, he would have to go the tail, because even if he didn't stop, if they threw the yellow for him, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Well, they do have him on the tail right now, but uh, the 50 stopped. Well, there's David Chappell pulling away. Well, we'll get him lined back up, and we'll get the C feature back underway when we come back live to Devil's Bowl Speedway. Sammy Swindell taking a look at the racetrack. Chuck Spicer, Randy Anakin down there as well taking a look at things. Some of the crews taking a look at the racetrack. See the cone there, the guy standing there by the cone. When they go green, everybody has to go by that cone on the outside, no passing until they get, get by there. And that man right there, Rick Zeal, will be the first one there. And it's all up to him to get on the gas. Now he can actually get on the gas just about anywhere once he's gone past the flag stand. You just can't pass anybody until you go and pass that cone. And it's frustrating for the guys in the back. If you have a slow car, if the leader takes off early and you've got a slow guy that maybe he doesn't, his motor stumbles and he can't get going, it is so frustrating because you want to turn, you know, go out around him and drive by him, and you can't. And it, it is very frustrating. 
Making their way out of turn two and looking for that orange cone. Las Cruces, New Mexico, Rick Zeal into the throttle. We got a nice jump. Two cars transferring out of this one, and Zeal in great shape right now. The 4D of Dan Dietrich right now uh, looks like he could make a trip onto the B as well. Yeah, those two cars are just kind of checking out. Uh, just, they just run their line and stay out of trouble. It should be okay. Rick Zeal runs for with or without a wing on the car, and that's not an easy beat. That's, that's quite a talented driver. It takes a different driving style with, with and without the wing. You know, the car slides a lot more without the wing. You run it in sideways, and with the wing, you have to run the car straighter and uh, not scrub off as much speed. So it's a completely different uh, driving technique. Brian Smith in the zero car is one spot out of a transfer, but he holds on to third in that zero car. And he's got the six car trying to catch him, Ray Campbell. Oh, and a yellow flag comes out as the 10X is around again, right here on the front straightaway. Very hard will. Well, him and David Chapel just have, not having too good of a C main tonight. No, Chapel is out of the C main. Uh, did not get the car restarted after the tow truck had to come out and get him. One of the push trucks up behind him, and they'll um, get him going again. Well, there you see the 18 car Zeal. He's just waiting to get going again. And it's kind of tough when you're in a position like that. You know you've got a good car, you know you're ready to go racing, and you just can't get out of this thing. Bobby Gerald? Well, Dion Hindi was a guy who is, he is a guy who's staging for the B main right now. Now, last night, Dion Hindi was involved in an accident in the B main that actually bent the chassis. They had to do some welding today, and they had to weld this piece right here to get the Nerf bar in there. So a lot of work has been done to get Dion Hindi back to the races tonight. We're going to see him in our next race, the B main. Dion Hindi, of course, running for Rookie of the Year, so it's important that he gets into the A main. You know, Dion told me that his dad uh, ran the first aluminum block in 1978, Donovan Block. Look at the back of the 4D. This is taking football pretty seriously. Dietrich, a huge fan of world champion Green Bay Packers. Was oh, that, that wind sock on? Because he's from Wisconsin, you suppose that has something to do with that? Sheboygan, <laughs> Wisconsin, as a matter of fact. Don't meet too many people from Sheboygan. go as well as the Packers did this year. He is in a transfer spot right now. That'll get him on to the B feature. Here goes that wild looking 22 T of Tommy Johnson around the inside. He's sitting back in about 6th or 7th right now. Handful of laps left to go for Zeal as he comes past the line again. A great shot when they go by. You can tell how fast they go down the front straightaway. It's a 60 car, the 20 getting by the 22, the 60 of Ricky Jennings. Norman, Oklahoma native. Now the 22 comes right by. He's going to slide. Oh, I thought he was going off the edge of the racetrack, but he, he saved it. They put that 22 on a computer and designed exactly the way they thought the car should be to get the maximum performance out of the tire. That's what they came up with. So it looks a little crazy, but supposedly the computer doesn't lie. Thought he was thought he had the six car down in turns one and two, and uh, he looks a little faster as he tries him again on the outside. This is where you run uphill out of turn two. And that is the fight for sixth position that we're watching is to catch up to the backside of Ray Campbell, who is the top rookie at Tulsa Speedway last year. Brewster Conley, who was a former World of Outlaw Crew Chief of the Year, tuning the wrenches on that machine. He had some problems with the six car earlier today, but it looks like Brewster living up to his uh, knowledge and getting him going pretty good. White flag is out for one more lap around the half mile here at Devil's Bowl as we wrap up the C-Main. So oh, the 8K out of it. Dody Miller, not going to matter as the checkered flag falls. And Rick Zeal will get the win. And second place is going to go to the Green Bay Packers and Dan Dietrich. We're moving on to the B-Main. Well, 
Paul McMahon is uh, one of the best racers out of Northern California, and he's standing by with Bobby Giro. Well, that's right, and he is a racer right now contending for the Rookie of the Year title with the World of Outlaws. This year, sponsored by a bunch of World of Outlaws manufacturers, going to pay 6000 to win at the end of the season, Paul, and you're looking pretty good with a, a shot at it right now. Yeah, Bobby, right now we uh, we got a pretty good shot right now, but uh, Donnie Schatz is, is right there with us. Uh, Dion Hendy's are not far behind us right there, too. Uh, it's a long season, but hopefully we'll have this beef packer stealth up front, and uh, we'll have the Hellbulls up the hammer down tonight and go to the front from this B man. We start a little far back, but uh, hopefully we can make the top four and uh, um, transfer on to the main event. All right, you're starting in the seventh row, and you do have to finish in the top four. If you don't get there, would you use a provisional tonight? Oh, yeah, you know, definitely we would have to use a provisional tonight because uh, points are everything, and, you know, tonight's a big night. It's double point, or not double point night, but it, it's two points per, per position that you lose, so we, we want to make sure that we don't want to have to use it, but uh, we get two a year, and if we have to use one tonight, we will. And it looks like the crew making a last-minute tire choice here. I want, before we go away, to take a good look at this helmet of Paul McMahon. It's the Beef Packers car. That is one ornery-looking bull right there. Paul McMahon's going to be charging in the B. The raging bull on the side of Paul McMahon's helmet. It is an absolutely great helmet. You know, you do get to go down into the pit areas at the World of Outlaw events after the race, and Paul likes to show off his helmet. So make sure you go down and check it out next time the Penzo at World of Outlaws come through your area. Well, let's go back downstairs over to the winner of this one. Here's Rick Zeal and Dave Reed. Sprint car specialist Rick Zeal, you're out of the race car. Shows you how tough this outlaw race can be. You were in the dash last night. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game tonight. Tell us about the racetrack out there and what happened. Obviously, a bad qualifying lap. Yeah, it was real wet when we went out there. We had a early qualifying number, so it kind of put us behind the eight ball right off the bat. Now you got some big changes to make. Are you going to make any for the uh, for the B main? Yeah, we're just going to try to tighten the car up and get a little better rubber on the car. Also going to add a little bit of fuel here as Rick Zeal is going to get back into this race car for our next race to be main. All right, David, thank you. Congratulations to Rick Zeal. He's out of the C and onto the B, which is what you're going to see next when the Pennzoil World of Outlaws return to Mesquite, Texas. It was an absolutely beautiful day here in the Dallas area earlier today. In fact, you could have worn shorts, but tonight the wind has kind of picked up. It's gotten a little bit chilly, but it kind of bundled up here at Devil's Bowl. I'm going to show you the results of the C feature now. Now, Rick Zeal and Dan Dietrich are the only two that are going to transfer out of the C onto the B. The rest of these drivers did their best, but they're going to have to join the rest of the crowd up in the grandstand. Yep, they load up and go home. Here's a look at the back half of the top ten. Johnson, Jennings, Reynolds, Armfield, and Jay Burns rounding out the top ten for the C feature. Well, you know, there's a lot of unique things to see and do around uh, Devil's Bowl. It's a little bit out in the country, but there's some pretty unique things here. Of course, the guy to find the unique, David Reed. When it comes to racing here at the Devil's Bowl Speedway, well, it's like a little slice of heaven. Besides the Penn's Oil World of Outlaws, they promise great racing action here every Friday night. And I can tell you from personal experience that the food here is among the best in the entire nation. But there is one little slice of Americana that's a must-see, must-do, must-experience right around the corner. Come on. We have reached our mecca, the Devil Bowl Fish and Hole Club Catfish Corner. Now, not too many people know this, but historical folklore says that the driver who catches the biggest fish on a race day at the Devil's Bowl Speedway is guaranteed a win that night. But if there's any drivers here, find out. Acres and acres of some of the best catfish fish in Texas has to offer. And look what we found here. No surprise, the winningest driver in Devil's Bowl history, Sammy Swindell. Sammy, have you been able to hook a big one yet? Well, not yet. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Look at the bend in that pole. I think Sammy Swindell has hooked himself a monster. Look at this. Judging by the size of that catfish, I'd be looking out for Sammy Swindell tonight. If history's on his side, it will be his night. Boy, I wish I could catch a big fish like Sammy Swindell. Oh, oh goodness gracious. Look at the size of this big boy. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, no. Well, I guess it's like Mom always said when she caught me singing in the shower. Don't quit your day job, son. Ah, uh, David. Well, what was the biggest fish you ever caught over there, uh, Doty? Actually, uh, I, I, I'm not much of a fisherman, Ralph. I, I didn't catch any over there. Did you go to the shooting range next door? Uh, no, I didn't do that either. How about the airport off the back stretch? Well, actually, with the, with the trees over here, you know, I didn't even know there was an airport over there for a long time. The gator farm? Did you go over there? I stayed away from there. 
You have no fun on the road, do you, Brad? Just, what I, do you do? I just raced. You know, I was just a dedicated racer, you know. Okay, sure, sure. Well, it sounds good. It does sound good. That's exactly right. Let's go back downstairs to another dedicated race fan, Bobby Gerald. Oh, that's right. Hey, Gary Brazier, the driver of the 75 car. They have catfish in Australia? Well, I'm sure they do, but um, I'm not really interested in catfish myself. Gary Brazier is a three-time Australian sprint car champion who is now behind the wheel of the Mopar car. And what do you think of this ride so far, Gary? Well, um, you know, it's new and interesting for both me and Gary Stanton uh, in the Mopar performance team. Um, you know, I'm sure we can get the job done eventually later in the year. Uh, right now, it's a new experience at all these different racetracks. And, you know, it's the first time we've come here down here to Devil's Bowl. And, you know, I think we're getting there. Uh, just hopefully we can go out there and win this one. All right, for the very first time at Devil's Bowl, he'll start on the front row of the B-Main. Dave Reef? Well, Bobby, no fish stories anymore here. Just a third of our outlaw Rookie of the Year contenders, Donnie Schatz. You're going to start in the second row. Always important to get up there as you're battling for those that big money. Yeah, you know, uh, we've been struggling the last couple nights and uh, started in the second row, and uh, last night we barely made it, but uh, hopefully we got everything regrouped and, uh, you know, we can win the B-Main and uh, get some get some spots in the feature. What's the racetrack like tonight, and what have you done to your car to try to uh, make sure you make the A? Well, uh, at the beginning of the night, you know, the racetrack was really wet, and, uh, you know, it was uh, way different than it was last night. It was better than we expected, and now everything's kind of slicking off again, and it uh, looks like there's going to be two grooves. Two grooves, I guarantee he'll pick one of them, and he'll be fast tonight. Donnie Schutz. Well, the Pennzoil World of Outlaws run a 410 cubic inch sprint car motor. Donnie Schatz last year won 25 races with a 360 sized power plant. The good young shot out of North Dakota. Welcome back to Devil's Bowl Speedway just outside of Dallas, Texas. Pennzoil World of Outlaws in action here. Let's show you the lineup for the B feature, B main event. We will take four cars out of here after this 12 lap race and put them to the back of the A main. Johnny Hollywood Herrera and Gary Brazier at row number one. Tony Schatz and Don Droud will make up row two. Row three, Tommy Estes is supposed to start there, be blue and engine. Tyler Walker is in there, Marlon Jones, Ronald Laney. Back to row number five. Mike Peters in the 66 car had that wild flip last night. Scott Whitworth, Leonard Lee, you saw him spin and continue on. And Justin By, the 17-year-old basketball junior high schooler out of uh, Illinois. Back in row seven, Memphis Mike Ward, Paul McMahon from California, Victor Hensley, who scratched, and Dan Oswald in the D1. Moving on deeper into the field, we'll take our way back to row, well, actually, that's it. I thought there was going to be another row. So this field now, four cars coming out of here and transferring on to the A main, and there's some interesting names in this one, I think, uh, with the fact that you've got a car like Mike Peters, who was pretty quick last night, so they got involved in his flip. Johnny Herrera, who is always quick, uh, won here with the NCRA back in 1992, so should be pretty interesting, don't you think, Bobby Gerald? Oh, I think it's going to be a heck of a race, uh, especially with uh, the Paul McBann thing in here. Paul McBann is qualified for every A main this season. He's going to be one to watch. Another guy, Scott Whitworth in the 96. He's a Knoxville regular from Worthington, Missouri, and he has uh, switched chassis. He's normally run a Chenet chassis. This year, he switched over to the Maxim simply because they were closer to his home. He said it was a long way to go to South Dakota, where the Chenets uh, were, were based out of, so he made the switch over to Maxim, and we'll see how he rides here in the B-Main. And that can affect you as a driver. Yeah, it is. You know, okay, it's a, now, sometimes it's a different setup. Now, you said four come out, only two get their time. The first two, the first and second place will get their time for the A-Main. The next two tag the tail of the A-Main. Johnny Herrera and Gary Brazier up in the front row. Donnie Schantz and Don Drought back in row two. And we're green. One car back into the wall, deep in the field. Oswald, I believe, who that was, Ralph. Yeah, I think you're right, the Sonic 1D. Leading this one as we go into three is Johnny Herrera. There you see shots. He runs in third, just behind the 75 car, the Mopar machine, and it looks like Oswald has lost it over in turn three. And that ought to bring out the yellow. 
what's happening there a little bit, Ralph. There's some loose stuff up there on the top of the racetrack, and they get a little, little too high and just slide off, off the end up there. Dan had some problems last night, too, over in turn one on the other side of the racetrack. He got loose a couple of times. All three of the drivers who are contesting for Rookie of the Year honors this year are in this B feature. Bobby Mc, or Paul McMahon, Dion Hindi, and Donnie Schott. So if any one of those drivers can move on and leave the other two guys behind him, he'll pick up some valuable points here tonight. Well, Tommy Estes' night is done. Let's go downstairs and find out what happened to him. Well, Ralph, he was supposed to, he was supposed to start fifth here in the B-Main, is what he wanted to say. But you're not out there, Tommy. What's the deal? No, we broke a motor again tonight. We've had a little motor trouble here lately, and, uh, you know, just luck's not with us right now. Uh, kind of kicked the rod out the side of it. This is getting ugly, I understand. That's about three in the last three races, isn't it? Yeah, we've run two races, really, and, I, and uh, I come out here last Sunday and tested a little bit and hurt one then, and then I got one last night and got one again tonight. This is not a pretty deal. Have you picked out a favorite here for this B-Main? To tell you the truth, Bob, I was sitting over there in the truck just watching the races where it was kind of warm. I can just see the back straight away. Since we're not in it, you know, it's kind of hard to say. I was, I, I'd, I'd like to be out there, but I'm not. We'll pick one for you. I think you like Scary Brazier. How's that? <laughs> Let's check in with Dave Reef now. Guys, you mentioned Hollywood Herrera, but I got to be honest with you. I, I, I don't know anything about Hollywood Herrera. I don't know where that came from, but I can tell you this. He had a very disappointing night last night. What He had a big fire under the hood of the car, and it looked like it could be trouble. But what really happened is a fuel line came off of the car, hit the uh, hot headers, the spark kicked up the fire. Everything is fine. Gil Sonner says that motor is running perfect here tonight. Well, actually, it was this television crew that dubbed him Hollywood Herrera because Johnny seems to do so well when he's on live TV. He performs very well, and his sisters, who handle his T-shirts and uh, souvenirs and stuff, jumped all over the Hollywood nickname, and that is actually the first time uh, the world has seen the new Hollywood Herrera hat, shirts, and everything else on their way out. So if you're a Johnny Herrera fan... Get your checkbook ready. Lots of new merchandise heading your way. Well, we're going to get them all lined up here, the B feature. We're just about set to go. We'll have them ready when we come back. Stay with us. Well, the B feature was scheduled for 12 laps. We've completed one, and Johnny Herrera led that one. It looks like he'll lead at least the beginning of the second lap. And behind him is Gary Brazier in Gary Stanton's car. A lot of people have driven for Gary Stanton, yourself included, and Al Unser Jr., another one. 1981, Al Unser Jr. drove that car here. Gary's had a lot of drivers. Didn't always have Mopar engines in them, but they do now. Here we go. Watch that orange cone. Hollywood on the gas and pulling away. Coming down on the bottom side is Donnie shot from Where? third to the lead. Where in the world did, how did he do that? My goodness, he shot out of nowhere. Now you see the fight for second between Herrera on the outside and the white and blue 47 and Brazier and the Mopar lost a lot of speed all of a sudden. Boy, he sure did. I don't, it looked like he really slowed going into turn three. I don't know what happened there, but boy, Donnie shots again. They got the nice shot. Donnie shots and drove away from him. He's, he's continuing driving away. There is a fight going deep run in the field. That's Mike Peters in the 66 and Marlon Jones in the other Sonic car, the 1J. That is outside of a transfer spot. That is actually in fifth as we've got a yellow flag for a car over in the turn three area, the 24 machine. That's Justin Vi. Now, Justin is a junior in high school. He's 17 years old. He plays power forward for his local high school back in Marion, Illinois. The basketball season just got over it. And now Justin goes sprint car racing. Yeah, I'm sure this isn't what he had in mind, but uh, he can get refired up, start on the tail here, and he's got a lot of laps left. Maybe he can get back up through here. Yeah, and he won't get any foul shots for that either. Let's go down to Dave Reed. Guys, I'm down with Randy Hannigan, the 1995 Rookie of the Year on the World of Outlaw Tour. He probably knows better than anybody else what's going on in the minds of the three drivers that are out there competing for it now. Do they think about each other when they're out there, all three in the B-Main like this? No, not too much. You know, they're, they're out there just trying to get to the feature right now, uh, you know, in the back of their head that they uh, they know that the other one needs to make it so they can keep up in the points, you know, that you know so they can keep going and uh, keep their points and stay ahead of the guys that are, you know, with them. So all three of them in there, so... 
you know, if uh, if they all three don't make it, so you know they'll stay up there in the points. Is there is there a point in time later in the season when they do think about it? Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. Randy Hannigan, he's getting the car all ready to go here. He'll be in tonight's A main, starting in the seventh row. That's coming up next, guys. You know, I know we're supposed to be uh, unbiased as broadcasters, but I really like that Randy Hannigan. Good kid. Wish he'd find some good sponsorship and be able to go racing. He's a great addition to the series. We're racing as we go. Shots pulling away. There you see the 75 Mopar car. Brazier going around the outside. What a nice move he made. Can he make it stick? Is it going to turn one? Boy, Herrera down on the bottom. Look out for those big white tires. They've been everybody last night. Right now, the final transfer spot is held by Trout right behind this fight as Herrera holds on to second place. This one's going back and forth. Yeah, uh, Brazier's a little slow getting into turn three. He's nice everywhere else, but uh, when they get up to speed, it seems like he really has to get out of the throttle getting into turn three and he loses a lot of ground. See the rear end chattering on the car as he came through there? Well, at the racetrack, they actually, sometimes they use a sheep's foot, they call it. It puts little uh, holes in the racetrack for the water to sit in, and that'll make your tire stutter and, sh and shake like that. Mike Peters in the Drop Arctic 66. He's running around in fifth position right now. A former NCRA champion from back in 1987 is one spot out of going to the A-Main. And the beat feature is what did him last night. Right there, as a matter of fact, he had a horrendous crap. Yeah, it was a big hit, hard hit, but everybody came out okay. Drought up into third now. The one BK, of the Burger King car, who's going to go for the NCRA championship this year as third with the Outlaws right now. Yeah, he didn't fare real well last night down right there in turn three. He clipped the inside tires and uh, knocked the front axle out. Mike Peters has to be happy there. He goes around. Uh, something, something is going foul with the Mopar car. He's slowing down. Well, that'll put Peters into a transfer spot, and Brazier sits one spot out of it now. Maybe Brazier went with the wrong tire. Yeah, it's hard to say what it is. You know, uh, um, I'd say it's more in setup than anything, the way the car looks, and uh, he's just not real fast down in one and two. He doesn't seem to be able to stay on the bottom, and that's where they're driving by him coming off. See as he slides up there, the one... Uh, Jay, that's Marlon Jones chasing after him, and also the 35 and Tyler, Tyler Walker. Walker. But now yes. look at Peters going after Drought, and he's going to come up to the inside. Well, I bet you uh, when this is over, people will be looking at Mike Peters' tires. The other crews and everybody will come down and look at it and see what rubber he has, what compound he has because he is fast right now. And Marlon Jones trying to get in there to challenge. Donnie Schatz continues to lead this one. Herrera sitting in second. And it's Peters in this fight back here. Oh, and Drought's car just dies. Don Drought's Burger King back. One BK is dead in the water. Everybody moves up one, including Marlon Jones, who's now looking at a transfer. Got one lap to go, Ralph, so they... Shots have to do is hang on and he'll win this one. Coming to the checkered flag as the yellow comes out. And no, we're not going to get the checkered flag. Thought maybe since that was a white flag lap that we would see a checkered flag come as it came to the line, but it looks like we're going to run up to the green to the checker. Yeah, Drought was sitting off at turn two and they felt he was in a dangerous spot and they had no choice but to throw the yellow. Probably a good call. So Don Drought is out, but he is not the only one to have had problems in this uh, closing laps here. Watch the 88 car right here, Mike Ward. Just up in the loose stuff. See how far he is up in the marbles? He's trying to save it. Boy, he knows right there. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. Bam, you know when he was lucky, the back of the car came around far enough that when he hit, had he not been around that far in the right rear hit, it would have slapped the front end in and, and possibly turned him over. And the other thing is there are bars all the way back around that gas tank there. You can see them. That protects that gas tank from rupturing and spilling the fuel out and causing a fire in a situation like that. Yeah, and all, the fuel tanks all have big, thick rubber bladders in them uh, of safety to uh, help from the a fire hazard. And that was implemented years ago, and it, it's a great rule. Believe it or not, at one time we uh, we didn't have to run bladders. Well, amazingly, Marlon Jones now, we're told, in the 1J has had steering problems and he is pitted. What a shame, because Marlon was sitting in a transfer spot, and now the Sonic back car is out. There you see the 1D. That is his teammate. That is uh, Dan Oswald. Dan Dan, the Sonic man, they call him. He owns a 
series of Sonic fast food chain restaurants. Donny Shot's not having any problems. And it looks like he might be the only rookie right now to make it into the field. Paul McMahon is real close to a transfer, and so is Dion Hindi. Shot's the only one locked in right now. Let's see if we can uh, get it squared up there. You see him coming by. There's the 83 of McMahon. There's the 11 of Hindi. Right now, Schatz is the leader. Herrera is second. Peters and Brazier back into a transfer. Then it's Tyler Walker, who is fifth. And then after that come the other cars of McMahon and Hindi. There's the 1J of Marlon Jones. Let's see if they can get this squared out and get him started again. It'll go green, white, checker when we get Jones off the course and back underway. You know, you might have noticed uh, Neon Dion Hindu, as we call him, the, the yellow car. That color, the car is that color. His dad is legally blind from a sprint car crash, did some retina damage, and they have the car that color so he can see it better on the racetrack. As you see it there, the bright, well, it's hard the to yellow, miss. lime, lime colored yellow car, and, and that's so his father can see it. Well, they have fixed Marlon Jones enough to get him going. They have pushed him off, and we're going to get set to go racing here. Green, white checker is what we're going to see. Here's the green. Look at the fight coming up from behind as those rookies all try to make their way through the field. Nobody able to move up so far. Nobody able to move up so far. Shots continues to lead. Tyler Walker on the outside of the Mopar car. Frazier moving up a spot. Dan Oswald can be the spoiler in the middle of all that. If he doesn't get out of the way, let the hook and Walker race through. On the outside. He's going to go around Peters. Boy, he... Oh, well, yeah, I think... Well, he's got a transfer right now. He sits in fourth, and Paul McMahon loops it over in turn two. And Marlon Jones into the tire, and we got a yellow. Wow, this one not over yet. So Shots, Herrera, Walker, and Peters, that's how they cross the line. You know, Shots is the leader of this thing. He's not, Right now, he's thinking, what in the world? Let's just get this thing over with. Um, you know, I, I did this myself, but leading the race, you think you're going to get the checkered and the yellow comes out. We have The rule says you have to run green, white, and checkered, so uh, you go back and do it again. Bobby Gerald? A lot has been made about Tyler Walker driving car number 35. He was the 1996 National Sprint Car Pole Rookie of the Year. His maturation process uh, trying to continue here this year, looking good in this B main. What he's going to do this season is he will actually have a shop in California where his home is in Santa Clarita. They will also have a shop in Franklin, Indiana, so that he can be in the crossroads of America when he's out on the road and be able to return home uh, maybe every couple of weeks instead of being way out there on, in uh, California on the left coast where you get home really only once a year if you want to try to run a national tour. And that's a huge advantage. Big advantage, you know, that just getting home once in a while, sleeping in your own bed or something you're used to, you know, uh, mentally it's, it's just a relief. One of the advantages for the Outlaws this year, not a lot of dates in the middle of the week, so they're able to get home for a couple of days in the middle of the week. A lot of the drivers are. Unfortunately, some of the crew, you know, they're, they're staying out here, so they have, they're working on the car, and uh, but the drivers are flying back and forth, and it, it, it keeps them sharper, I think. Well, let's see if Donnie Schatz can hold him off again. Green, white, checkered, set to go. Here comes Tyler Walker. See him closing in at the 35. Tyler to the outside of Mike Peters again. Oh, look at the big push that uh, Ferreira took. Boy, that cost him. Big time. Cost him two positions. He's all the way back to fourth and on the verge of not transferring. The Walker Walker's up to second. Peters up to third. Here comes McMahon from deep in the field. Indy gets tagged and goes around, and that's going to bring out another yellow. Poor Donnie shots. He can't believe it. You know, you just you just ride around her, and you, you know, you, yes, he's fast, and you think he's got this thing. It looked like he even shook his head there a little bit, like, man, I can't believe this. You know, you, there's always a chance of something breaking or something. You know, you just, just show me the checker. Dion got hit by another car as he went racing down the back stretch. And uh, just kicked him right around. I want to go back to that I mentioned. Dion told me his, his dad ran the first aluminum engine in 1978 in a sprint car. He said it was serial number number four. 
One went to a drag boat, one went to a drag car, and one was just a mock-up block. So he got the number four serial number and and uh, ran the first aluminum engine. Well, Dion has won in Texas uh, back in 1992. He won in Lubbock, Texas. Never been there either, I don't think. I'm... The home of Bobby Schobert, one of the best ever to swing his legs over a motorcycle. Let's go down to Bobby Gerald. Well, guys, with all these yellow flags, let's still not count out Paul McMahon, who, as we talked about, has made every World of Outlaws feature event this year in his quest for Rookie of the Year. Now, Paul told me before the race that he will use a provisional if he doesn't finish in the top four. You're granted two of these during the course of the season. It's very important for Paul McMahon to continue to be in these A main events because they've kind of set a, a, not really a deadline, but they have set a date about 20 races into the season where they will evaluate the program. If they're in the top 10, they'll continue to do the whole World of Outlaws tour. And if they're not, well, then they may start picking and choosing their races and uh, and come off the tour. Paul wants to stay with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws, so he wants to be in that A main tonight real bad. Well, he is the seventh or eighth car in line right now, and uh, he's actually in about sixth position, so he's two cars away from the transfer spot, so he's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, he does. You saw him in the 83, kind of warming up his tires right there, and, uh, you know, back to that cone, sometimes it's an advantage and sometimes it's a disadvantage. The, what it's done, it's, it's stopped, the cone has stopped a lot of jumping on the, on the uh, restarts, uh, people two and three wide banging and bumping back there, and... Uh, but a guy can't get a big advantage either. Let's try it again. Here we go. Again, Tyler Walker to the outside of Mike Peters. Looks like he goes right around. Did that help Johnny Herrera? You know, he lost all those spots. He's up to second again. Well, it put him back up there That's because right. they go back to the last completed lap. So um, what a, what a, that was definitely a help to him because now he'll get his time back. Tyler Walker now sits, so I should say Paul McMahon sits fifth. One spot out of a transfer, he's passed a couple, but the white flag is out. Look at this fight between Walker and Herrera. This is the best race I've seen Tyler Walker run. His car is working. He, he's done that before, and he scared me. I thought he was going to clear off the racetrack and turn two, and it sticks. He drives right off. That is the best race I've seen this kid drive yet. Here's something we've all waited for, a checkered flag. Donnie Schatz gets the win. Walker comes up second. Herrera and Peters. Paul McMahon's going to have to use a provisional. Well, so the B feature is finally over. Donnie Schatz will get the win. Tyler Walker with a nice performance. He will go on to the A. Johnny Herrera will join him there. We're going to step away for just a minute, but Stevie Smith in the 19 ready for the A main. Stay with us. Racetrack, I just love that one. Mesquite, Texas is where it is located at, just outside of Dallas, the big D. And we have finally completed the B main. Took us a while. Donnie Schatz gets the win. Tyler Walker, Johnny Herrera, and Mike Peters all transfer on. Now, Paul McMahon, as we heard earlier, might utilize a provisional to get himself in there. He can do that. And right now, he sits one spot out of it with the transfer. Let's go down to the winner, Donnie Schatz, who's standing by with David Reed. Donnie Schatz, you found a groove out there and made it work. Great drive to the front. Thank you. You know, uh, you know, like I said before, I went out. Uh, it's a two-lane racetrack, and uh, you know, we can get this car to work uh, on the top or the bottom. So, uh, you know, I'm just glad we made it out of the B, and uh, maybe we can get forward in the A. Now, rookie chase, uh, Paul McMahon might have to take a provisional. You could, you could gain some points tonight. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we could gain a lot of points, but, uh, you know, I'm not really worried about the points. Uh, it's so early in the season uh, to be worried about that, that, uh, you know, uh, we've got uh, 108 races a year, so uh, anything can happen. Well, he's in the A main. That was his first concern tonight. Let's go over to Bobby Gerald. Stevie Smith is going to be starting in the third position in tonight's A main. And Stevie, third sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a lot better where we've been starting, so we're happy with that. Hopefully at the end of the race we can be up front somewhere and, and hopefully in first and sitting there in victory lane when the night's all over. The track obviously getting slicker. We saw a lot of spin outs there in the B main. How will that affect you and what you guys do here? Uh, we're changing things around, trying to win the race. Uh, I don't know. We could have maybe played it safe and, and hung in there, but we're going to try to win it, so we're changing some stuff around. It is getting slick. Stevie Smith utilizes the all coil over uh, uh, chassis configuration here. A lot of people say that those work best on a dry track like this. Well, I don't know. We haven't ran it enough. Uh, it's, it's all new to me, but my dad's working real hard on it, and hopefully he'll get it right for me. And other than that, I don't feel a whole lot of difference. Stevie Smith has won here at Devil's Bowl before, and this may be his best shot this year. 
I like that combination here tonight. I think Stevie Smith stands a great chance of winning this. What we saw out of him in this car last night may have really been working on this. His dad, Steve Smith Sr., is doing a lot of R&D work, and I think this, this car is going to be a contender this year. Yeah, I have to agree with that. They had some, quite a bit of engine, of engine trouble at the beginning of the year that really put them behind. When you're messing with the engine, you don't have time to deal with the chassis and worry about the setup. They've been fine-tuning it. Now, they're, you know, last night they worked the work off of last night add to that and try to get faster. Dave Reap has been roaming around Pit Road and he has found the guy who has won more races here at Devil's Bowl than anybody else on Pit Road. Right, Dave? And I've also found the world's largest mosquito. I guess everything is big in Texas. Well, here's the Get a Grip car and here's the Get a Fish man. We saw you, Sammy, earlier today. The monster catfish on that line. Is that going to equal the win tonight? Well, I don't know. I hope so. Uh, you know, we got the channel lock car working pretty good. We just... Uh, Need to start up a little closer to the front on some of these things, but uh, we had a good run last night, um, you know, and then we've had some good runs this year, so uh, hopefully we can have this thing just right and pass a bunch of guys. What did happen last night? I think it was a tire that reached out and grabbed you. Is that right? Well, yeah, it kind of moved over on me a little bit. It got a little tight over there between three and four and um, tried to get between a car and a, and a tractor tire, and the tractor tire won. I'll tell you what, though, that catfish catfishing over there it's some of the best could you believe the size of that fish you caught well it's pretty big it's like the ones we have back home <laughs> well he's got a full stomach and he'll be starting 11th on the grid tonight does it equal a win well we'll find out in 30 laps guys well he has won more races here than anybody else but a guy who would like to get a win here is dave blaney dave has got one of the nicest tow rigs you will find anywhere in the world of racing bobby gerald took a look if you're going to cover the 25 to 30,000 miles that it takes when you travel a full World of Outlaws schedule, you may as well do it in style. And that's what Dave Blaney and his vibrant Hilton Motorsports U.S. print team are doing this year. Featherlight has designed this trailer exclusively for Dave Blaney and Kenny Woodruff, his crew chief. What does it have? Well, you need a place for your components. How about that? Nice place for the radius rods and the rear ends. You need a place for your engines? No problem. Slide a panel away and there's three shaver bullets ready to go at any time you can drop them in in 10 or 15 minutes which this team is certainly capable of lots of elbow room lots of space to work a place for the t-shirt sales bring it up right here on the old cash register now we get to my favorite part of this trailer dave blaney's personal lounge let's take a look you walk inside and one of the first things you'll notice is that it has air conditioning that's cool microwave oven in case you get hungry CD player, VCR, and television. Now, what does it take? You have to pony up the money to get a trailer like this. Well, fully equipped, a trailer similar to this one will cost you a half a million dollars. And if I know Dave Blaney, he's been watching the NC2A basketball tournaments like crazy. Big basketball junkie, quite a hoopster in his own right. Oh, that's cool. I gotta get one of those. Welcome back to Devil's Bowl. There's the eight feature cars lining up. Andy Hillenberg, Daniel Lasoski, and Morgan Woody. This is the official push truck of the series. Let's check in downstairs with David Reed. And we will check in with the wild child, and he's going to make things exciting tonight, I guarantee. Jack, start back in a fourth throw. What's it going to take to get up and win this spring Nationals A main tonight? Well, uh, I think we're pretty close to the car. Uh, we ran good in the heat race and uh, the dash, we were all right. So uh, we just changed the car around a little bit for the feature. So I think uh, I think car the Elden Racing car will be pretty fast. He always makes things exciting, and so does somebody else. Guy Forbrook, you've been able to make this car go unbelievably fast. You must know something about these cars. Uh, I don't know if it was unbelievably fast, but we're going pretty good right now. I just hope that we can take it to the front tonight and win this thing. Well, I guarantee the name says it all. Wild Child, Guy Forbrook, very potent duo. Pretty unique pairing there, and Go ahead. Uh, a lot of fun watching those two work together. Bobby Gerald? Well, we saw that bull once before, before the B-Main. He started 14th, did charge all the way up to 5th, even with a spin-out involved, but 5th wasn't good enough, so Paul McMahon, will you take a provisional? Yeah, Bobby, definitely will take a provisional tonight. Uh, we're in this Rookie of the Year point deal and uh, trying to run the top 10 of the world of Outlaws, so we got to take the provisional. You know, we get two a year, and uh, we don't like using this early in the season, but uh, if we got to do it, we got to do. What about that spin? How slick is the track? Oh, the track's real slick. We uh, we had the car a little tight for the heat race, so we loosened her up just a tad while the track went away, and, and uh, we, we we're a little loose, so I got in there hot and, uh, after the white flag, had nothing to lose, and uh, got in there a little too hot and spun her around. Luckily, I kept it going, and a yellow flag came out and kind of gave us another shot at, 
at uh, to run up in top four, but you know we came up a little short tonight. Well, Paul McMahon told us that he was going to have his elbows up in that B main, and you heard it, guys. On the white flag, he had nothing to lose. He went for it. Paul McMahon going to utilize that provisional. There we are, way up top here, high above Devil's Bowl Speedway. Lenny Edwards has uh, got this sent back behind the grandstands there. And in that crowd is a bunch of youngsters whose fathers are racing on that side. Take a look at the youngers. How about this for a new meaning to the words family racing? Now, granted, there will be families racing here on the big Devil's Bowl Speedway. But right below me here on the Kitty Bowl, the little Devil's Bowl Speedway, some of Sprint Car's next generation drivers getting set for an A main. These are Steve Kinzer's kids, Kurt and Craig. This is Sheldon Leeskamp, son of the Goodyear tire man, Roger Leeskamp. And in the middle, Kevin Swindell, son of Sammy Swindell. Surely enough, his father is on the pole. The winningest driver ought to be. Steve Kinzer to his outside. Brad Doty, you're even in this field starting inside of row number two. Are you guys ready to take the green? Yeah. Oh, how about some enthusiasm? Are you ready to go green? Yeah. Let's do it. We got green. Brad, nice job. You're already in second place, buddy. Those youngsters having a lot of fun, but you know, it was a pretty rough week for the racing world, and especially the family of the world of outlaws. Earlier this week, we lost some great people to our family. Legendary driver Kenny Weld, crew chief Davey Brown Jr., Cora Kinzer, the mother of Steve Kinzer, and Tom Roller, the brother of our producer Jim Roller, all passed away. Of course, the Pennzoil World of Outlaw family wanted to pass on their condolences to John Nemechek's family as well. Your name is the dude. You got 800 horsepower strapped to your right foot and you're cinching the belt down as you're ready to go racing with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. That's Danny the Dude Lasoski ready to go with the eight feature cars. From that angle, you can see the difference in the rear tires, how much smaller the left rear tire was. There you see Danny Lasoski. The 1W ready to go. He's going to wipe off that visor. He's got tear-offs on there. Ralph Sheen, Brad Doty, Bobby Gerald, and Dave Reef with you. Now here's a look at the point standings from the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. After last night's racing, this is as up-to-date as you can get. Mark Kinzer leading the point standings. Of course, he is the reigning champion. Hillenberg, the wild child, Hot and Shield, Laney, and the dude sitting back in fifth. Steve Kinzer, Jeff Swindell, his brother Sammy. Greg Hodden and Joe Gurdy rounding out the top 10. And as you can see, as we go back to 15th, where we find Stevie Smith, points are pretty tight this year. Three guys in the top five haven't won a main event this year, so that just shows how consistency really pays off. You know, gets to add those points up, and that's what it takes. Well, now let's get right into the grid for tonight's A feature with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. We've had five races so far and five different winners. Who's going to be tonight? Andy Hellenberg and Mark Kinzer, they're up on the front row. Stevie Smith and the Buckeye Bullet, Dave Blaney, back in row two. Steve Kinzer, row three beside Joe Gurdy. Then you have Jack, the Wild Child, Hot and Shield. Danny the Dude Lasoski outside of him. Terry McCarl, the 8-H, he won a heat race earlier. Gary Wright did as well there in row five. Sammy Swindell and Donnie Crawford in an old Eddie Hillenberg car in row six. Steve Kinzer's brother Randy there, Greg Hodnett beside him. Lance Blevins, the youngster, Greg Glansky. Row 9 finds Aaron Burial. He's going to run an IndyCar, an American IndyCar Series race tomorrow. Spring cars tonight. Dean Jacobs, the Hurricane, Randy Hannigan, and shots in row 10. Young Tyler Walker, Jeff Swindell from the back again. Johnny Hollywood Herrera and Mike Peters. Row 13, Paul McMahon utilizing that provisional. He's in the show. So the lineup is complete. Uh, is this a track, do you think, Brad, that will give us a new winner? Well... You know, it's Andy Hillenberg's best shot starting on the front, uh, but Mark Kinzer was awesome fast last night. Uh, but again, it's 30 long laps and anything can happen. You know, but you got to go with the front row guys. Uh, we get into a lot of traffic. That's when the race gets interesting. And, uh, it's nice to see some new guys win. Gary Wright in the nine car has won two out of the last four races here with these guys. If you think the non-regular can sneak another one? Well, he starts pretty far back. There's some good good cars in front of him. and uh, But the track's... Uh, there's a multi-groove track tonight. It's not real sticky and heavy where everybody gets out and runs wide open and there's not a lot of passing. We're going to see a lot of passing going on. Steve Kinzer and the uh, Quaker State cars, they form up with a four wide, won the last weekend out in Mississippi. 
Looked awfully good coming up from 22nd last night. Maybe the King's on a roll. You know, a lot of times when you start in the back like Steve did last night, you just throw caution to the wind. You, you just change your race car. You do things that you might not normally do starting toward the front because you think, well, what do I have to lose? So sometimes you might be a little conservative uh, starting up front. We'll see. Bobby Gerald, as they go four wide, what's happening down on pit road? Well, we'll talk a little bit about the tire compounds that these guys will go with for the a man. I just talked with Scott Girk and crew chief for Steve Kinzer, and Scott told me that his team went out with a 25C. I asked him if that was any kind of a gamble, because a 25C leans toward the softer side of the compound, and he said no, he thought that uh, it was pretty safe. He figures most of the Goodyear teams are out there on the 25Cs, a soft compound despite the dry conditions, Brad Doty. Well, it is. It's one step up. The 20 is the softest in the Goodyear. Last night, they ran a 40 on the right rear. The top 10 ran a 40 on the right rear and a 25C on the left rear. Now they're running the 25C on the right rear. The racetrack's not as abrasive tonight. And they'll break it up. Get in behind the pace car and form up too wide. And we should be racing here momentarily. The four wide's a pretty neat deal for the drivers. It is. It's a salute to the fans, you know. And, and I've, I've mentioned before, that's not an easy task. You can go on some little quarter-mile racetracks trying to run four wide and these things with all that stagger they bounce around and it's hard not to rub wheels while you're just lining up with the four abreast. There you see it, the working 5M, the Maxim chassis. Uh, Mark Kinzer and his crew chief father Carl who is an absolute genius. There are kings and there are king makers and I'll say it again, Mark Kin or Carl Kinzer, definitely a king maker. For those that said there will never be another Carl Kinzer, Mark had a new baby named Carl. There is another Carl Kinzer. Congratulations to to Mark and Cindy Kinzer. Dave Blaney also had a little girl, so a lot of babies in the world about law. And we found out that Jeff Swindell's wife, Sissy, is pregnant. And Stevie Smith's wife is pregnant, so. Family genes continue. We're racing as we come off of four. Boy, Andy got a nice start. Um, Mark got a little bit loose, spun the wheels, I believe. We're staying green. Mark Kinzer sits in second. Dave Blaney comes rocketing up into third. There's the Buckeye Bullet. He's flying in the Mount Vibrant car. Got a great shot off of turn two. Steve tried the outside, but slid wow. high. Steve Kinzer Look at left. Blaney come. See Mark, see Mark picked his right front wing. When he got in there, he turned the car, the wing buried, and it picked the right front. How often do you see a car drive by Mark Kinzer like that? Dave Blaney is flying. Kenny Woodruff, the crew chief on Dave Blaney's car, was the crew chief and car owner of the car that won here with the first Spring Nationals back in 1978 when the Outlaws raced here for the first time as a group. There is Tyler Walker off of the racetrack. Well, we're going to take this opportunity while they grid them back up to step away from Devil's Bowl just for a moment. We'll be right back. Right there. That bolt looks huge from here, but that's only about a half-inch bolt, so... And I'm sure it's titanium. Unobtainium, probably. Joe Gertie, the son of the famous engine builder. See that blue thing on Andy's car there? On the left of the roll cage, that shields the uh, light glare from the infield. It doesn't get in her face. Kenny Hillenberg only had one feature win last year, came in Las Cruces, New Mexico. He likes his southwestern dirt. Yeah, and he always runs well here, so uh, right now he's wishing the checkered flag was coming out. He doesn't care how many laps are in. That's right. He still pays the same. Points and money. As we come to the cone, it'll be Hillenberg, Mark Kinzer, Blaney, Steve Kinzer, Stevie Smith, and the wild child, Hot Cheer. Look at Mark Kinzer trying to fend him off as he goes to the outside. Dave Blaney trying to keep a streak alive. He's won every year since 1982. Hasn't done that already this year. He's completed that streak. Now look at this. Oh, he, I think he woke Mark up a little bit. When Dave went by Mark, I think he just woke him up a little bit. Now, Mark Kinzer doesn't have a wing slider, or at least he didn't. I know they might have put it on before the A-Main, but it's Carl the driver could adjust the wing. He has now, because of weight, taken it off. I don't know whether Mark has it back on and moved the wing, but something has hooked that car up where he's found a different line. It's hydraulically controlled from inside the cockpit. Mark out front right now. There you see Blaney. Here is a fight deeper in the field. That's Stevie Smith and the black number 19. Joe Gertie on the bottom in the white three car. And behind them is Jack Hottenshield in the Pennzoil 22. A fight for second and third. 
Blaney's gotten by in Hillenburg and looks like he's closing back in on Mark. And Steve Kinzer behind them. Steve with over 700 sprint car victories since back in 1976. Looking for another one here tonight, but it's his cousin out front who everybody is chasing. Notice the different lines. Some of the cars way around the top and a few right around the bottom. Steve Kinzer going upstairs, just sticking that big right rear up into the loose stuff, up to the cushion. Mark Kinzer holds a track record here, 13.6 seconds. That was set four years ago. Nobody's got near it. Into the lap traffic now. This could get interesting. Look at Blaney down on the bottom. He goes inside of Paul McMahon. Closing up on Mike Peters in the 66. He gave Mark a shot. Mark got away from me a little bit. Until Mark Kinzer there in the five. Got away from Dave Blaney in that lap traffic. Mark likes it up top as well. Should be working for him. Now Blaney moves upstairs. That's right now. That's the fast way around. Unless they start getting some rubber down through the middle, uh, that probably won't change. Right, and there's Kenny Woodruff, who is one here with Leland McSpadden and Bobby Davis and a bunch. And now he's trying to win with Blaney's fast class Mark Kinzer. And that's who he's trying to win with. Dave Blaney is driver. They've switched over from the Ford to the Chevy. What was that with a smile on Kenny Woodruff's face? No, Woodruff never smiles, but I know he's happy on the inside. Kinzer not giving up, though. No, he's not letting him get away as he comes right back. going to try the bottom. See a little bit of brown right down around the bottom there? That's what they're trying to run in. They don't slide up into the black and get that big right rear up into the black and, and get the car Blaney's slowly pulling away there a little bit, though. A lot of laps lot of in lap. front of him now. Blaney last winning here back in 1993. He's got to contest with a bunch of slower cars now in front of him as they come out of turn number four. Donnie Schatz, Dean Jacobs, and Tyler Walker, the first one he's going to deal with. And again, nobody has those mirrors in these things. The lap cars have no idea that the leaders are coming or where they are. That's so the fight for third you're looking at right there. Hillenburg and Sammy Swindell. Then it's Steve Kinzer, Hot Shield, Danny Lasoski, Joe Gurdy back behind them. Boy, that's what you don't want to see when you're leading a race. Is two, two lap cars running side by side for position. Mark Kinzer almost had a shot. Gonna get it. Hillenburg's going to get it. He's going to take, take the lead. lead. Can you believe that? Those guys got tied up behind the lap cars, and Andy Hillenburg drives by both of them. And the McCrary's may be working for Hillenburg as he comes inside and takes the lead and starts to pull away. Look what he's done there, Ralph. He drove by those guys. Look at the lead already. In one lap, he's got a straightaway lead. Sammy Swindell has moved up to fourth. He started 11th. The Channel Lock car is flying as well. You know, if these cars had radios, the crew chief would be telling Andy, just cool it. Take, you know, take your time through lap traffic. You're awesome fast. But unfortunately, they don't. So he's running as hard as he can run. Mark Ginzer still trying to find a way to catch up to Hillenberg. who's leading this one. As you see Gary Wright going away. There's Hillenberg, the SCP car, trying to work Tony shots. There's Mark Ginzer just behind him in the Mark's, white and orange 5M. And Mark's closed back in just a little bit as Andy's getting tied up to some of these lap cars. He's on the outside of him now as they come off a of turn two. And Hillenberg slides up to defend the line. Now cuts back to the bottom, and if Mark can get around that outside, he can take this spot away. This is amazing. I mean, Andy drives by and drives off. We saw Blaney do it earlier. Get by Mark and get away. Mark comes back. Dave Brief, what do you see from the pits? Well, I see Keith Carlson, a crew chief, watching very curiously as his driver tries to hold on to the lead. Do you have the car set up for the long haul? Yeah, we probably were a little bit tight starting off. And took a while for the tire to kick in, but I think we're going to be okay now. Know your driver could come right back up there like that. I got faith in Andy. He does a darn good job for us. You know, he drives his hardest all the time. Faith will do a lot for you. The battle continuing to rage out on the racetrack. It's Hillenburg, Mark Kinzer, Sammy Swindell is flying. He's up to challenge for second to the inside of Mark Kinzer. Steve Kinzer rides in fourth. Then it's Blaney, Lasoski, and Hodgeel. Sammy Swindell in the one car is flying. Boy, he's running down as close to those infield tires. Remember last night he clipped one and knocked the front axle out. Sammy is a master on the bottom side of a racetrack. He slides back upstairs there. Look at that. First, second, and third going out of right there in the midst of all that traffic. Here comes Hillenberg to the inside of Barry Hill. Now he's going to the outside of Jeff Swindell. He had no choice, Ralph. He goes in on the bottom, and then with his momentum, he had to slide up and Mark gets Mark gets into the lead. 
When Andy slid to the top, it gave Mark wide open on the bottom and got underneath of him. Oh, and oh, Andy Ellenberg gets hung up with Jeff Swindell, and Sammy will take advantage and take over second place. Boy, a big hung up he did. Boy, there's a, he almost ran over the Jeff Swindell, and of course, Jeff didn't know he was there. Sammy right there in the one car, going after Mark Kinzer, 5M. Mark goes a little wide, coming off of turn number two. Steve Kinzer is closed into the backside of Hillenburg as you go on board with Danny Lasloski, who is fighting his way up into this mix. Now the dude is right in the middle of this. He sits back in fifth, make that sixth position right now. He is right on the backside of Dave Blaney, who holds on to fifth. Sammy Swindell still running on the bottom of this Cadillac car. And this one winding the last down. And meanwhile, Mark Kinzer's pulled out to a comfortable lead, uh, but he's getting into some lap cars, and there's Sammy coming up behind him. Boy, traffic made this one exciting there for a while, but now that's starting to break up a little bit with just five to go. Mark seems to be opening up a lead. It's Mark Kinzer, Sammy Swindell, Steve Kinzer riding in third, then it's Blaney now back up to fourth, Hillenberg back to fifth, Gertie takes sixth away, and Lasoski loses it all the way back to eighth as Jack Hottenshield picks him off as well. You said lap traffic made, made it, making this race interesting. That's what makes sprint car racing interesting. There's a lot of lap traffic. The guy who chooses and gets through with, with no mirrors and, and not be able to see the tires, this is amazing. Amy Swindell watching anxiously downstairs. How's she doing, Bobby? Well, I don't know how she does this. I want to stand up and watch this race. She's just sitting down here. She scores a little bit. Amy, do you think Sammy can get up there into the top spot? I hope so. Uh, the guys told me they put a little different tire on and now the yellow's come out. So this is a whole new ball game now. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. A whole new ball game with the yellow flag. And we'll keep an eye on Sammy Swindell and see if he can get around Mark Kinzer out. Lance Blevins, the Sitco car number 21, spins out. He was battling with Hot Shield and he lost it in the midst of that fight. We'll be back. The Pennzoil Roll of Outlaws putting on quite a shoe. Hang in there, Amy. Joe Gertie's going to try to hold off that 1W for four more laps. Daniel Lasoski trying to close in on him. And we've got just four laps to go, and let's show you how they stack up right now. Mark Kinzer, Sammy Swindell, Steve Kinzer, Dave Laney, and Andy Hillenberg. That is the order, but not necessarily order on the racetrack. Sammy is right behind Mark Kinzer, but then it's Terry McCarl, Delansky, Jeff Swindell, Hodnett, Steve Kinzer, Barry Hill, Laney, then Hillenberg. So there's some lap cars in to hold some of these guys up. Yeah, Steve's in trouble with all those lap cars between him and Swindell, but Sammy is right on the back bumper as uh, Mark Kinzer getting ready to go green here. Back behind Hillenberg, for those of you scoring at home, Gertie and Hodgeshield and Lasoski are all right in there together, and those three cars are battling for 6th, 7th, and 8th. We'll have to wonder what happened to Hillenberg after such a good run. It just seemed like within a matter of a lap or so, he just really slowed down. There's a good look at Danny Lasoski as he sits inside the car. Bobby Gerald, everybody okay down on pit road? Well, they're trying to be. Amy Swindell has gotten up from her perch, though, now. She's a little closer to the racetrack. Now, she may have given something away when she said that Sammy went with a, a harder tire compound. He did indeed, Lynn Stewart told me, go with a 40 compound, and that is the harder tire that Brad talked about. Most of the guys were running last night when the track was a little more abrasive. For the long haul, that has been an excellent choice for Sammy Swindell, who right now is going to give Mark Kinzer all he can handle. And we also saw Carl Kinzer giving his son Mark the thumbs up, saying everything's okay, just four more to go. That's what we're going to see when we come back to Devil's Bowl. Stay with us. Four laps to go. You see Jack Hodenshield's car back there. We're getting a report of smoke coming off the Pennzoil car. This was not a good sign for Sammy Swindell with that hard compound tire as we go back to green. Well, that's what we were reporting. He had a hard tire. And a lot of times the 40 will seal over on the yellow, and it takes a little while for it to get, come back again. It's looking good right now, but Mark got a great shot off of the corner there off the turn two and drives away. 
Sammy did not want to see this yellow flag. The, the 40, the harder compound, takes a little heat to make it get sticky, and the longer he runs, the hotter the tire gets, makes him faster. So he definitely didn't want to see that yellow. Mark Kinzer looking for his third straight Dallas World of Outlaw win, and he's well on his way in that working 5M. The Maxim chassis machine working great here tonight. Sammy Swindell sits in second as the white flag comes out. Steve Kinzer rides back in third. Then it's Blaney, Hillenburg, Gurdy, Blitzowski, and Hottenshield. I can tell you right there on that shot, Mark definitely has his wing slider on board because he's got the wing back farther now than he did before. And he's got the win with the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. We finally got a repeat winner on the tour. Mark Kinzer gets the win. Sammy Swindell is second. Steve Kinzer is third. Blaney is fourth. And behind him will be Hillenburg and... We're going to have to check on that afterwards behind him because Lasoski and Gurney came by pretty close together. We'll have it officially for you when we come back to Devil's Bowl Speedway where we will talk to the winner, Mark Kinzer. The work in 5M has another trip to Victory Lane. The fans all lining up along the fence because momentarily after Victory Circle celebrations are complete, they will open up the gates and let them all go down to meet their favorite drivers, get some t-shirts like the brand new Brad Doty shirt that just came out today. Extra large Doty. Here's a look at the results. Mark Kinzer the winner. Sammy Swindell comes home in second. Steve Kinzer, Dave Blaney, and Andy Hillenberg. Well, Mark Kinzer is a brand new dad and a race winner. and He's down there with David Reeve. And he's crawling out of the work in Maxim, sweeping the entire Spring Nationals event in 1997. Mark, congratulations. Well, thank you. You know, the team done a real good job. The car was working good. Uh, that was one heck of a race. You know, I seen uh, Andy was giving me a tough time there. You know, he's a tough competitor. And then I seen Sammy, and then Blaney was poking his nose in there. I tell you what, this working car was really fast tonight, and uh, those guys were pretty quick, too. And you can't forget Steve was even in that battle as well. Take us through the start. Andy was able to get the jump. Yeah, Andy, he's, he's always real tough here at Devil's Bow or anywhere, matter of fact, you know, and the, the, we was kind of geared up for him more than anybody else tonight, and, and the crew done a real good job. Of course, my father and Jamie and, and Bob done a real good job, and, and it was just one of those nights where, where things were working good, but we still may not come away with the win. And you had one place, a real tight lap traffic, but you got through it all. Bobby Gerald, I guess Mark Kinzer, by picking up that wind means he caught a bigger catfish across the street. Well, I guess so, but uh, I don't know. I think the catfish did Sammy Swindell pretty good tonight. He comes home with a second-place finish, and Sammy, going with that harder compound tire seemed to really help you tonight. Well, maybe it did. You know, we uh, after the B, we wanted to go kind of in between. We had one a little too soft, and this one was a little bit too hard. It, it held up pretty good, but there, uh, late in the race, it was uh, letting the car push coming off the corners a little bit, and uh, I was having to just uh, backpedal of things some but uh it was a pretty good night for the channel lock car the driver didn't mess up tonight so uh you know we, we got a good run out of it the, the yellow there kind of hurt us i think uh, we needed to stay going in the traffic but uh we were we were about even with mark he was probably just a little bit better right off the corner but i could get in a little bit better than he could was it about the tire cooling off then a little bit during that yellow flag you wanted to keep it uh, heated up well, it was just going to be hard to pass him in the open. You know, I tried to make a run around the top, but it wasn't wasn't as good. You know, on the start, uh, I knew I had about three lap cars between us, so I had a, had a, a chance to make a try something and and, uh, and let him get about three or four car lengths, you know, off the corner. But uh, we ran him back down. But you know, I tried to get under him and let him see me there getting into one and hope he'd maybe slip off the edge a little bit or. or but, you know, he didn't make a mistake, and uh, that, was, that was all we could do was just try to make him make a mistake. And, um, you know, it didn't work. Uh, you know, once we got out there in line again, and uh, we, just, we just stayed right with him. Congratulations on the second-place finish, Sammy Swindell. The fans saw a good race tonight, Ralph and Brad. Well, they sure did. Sammy Swindell, a big part of that. Coming home in second place with the folks from Channel Lock and Tom Sanders from Gambler, who will be talking to him. That's, of course, the brand of chassis that... Sammy drives here. Now, Brad, this is the first repeat winner we've seen in the 97 Tour. Uh, we've got more live television races than ever this year, and Mark getting a win at Paris, which was also seen on live national television earlier this year. Uh, we hadn't seen any domination. Are we maybe starting to see that? Well, <laughs> I've talked to some people today, you know, it seems like everybody will just start to catch up with Carl and he'll figure something out and back he comes again you know he just tries to stay one step ahead of the competition and obviously does a good job with it but it does seem like everybody else is closer than they've been before there's a good look at that maxim chassis the 5m 
of Mark Kinzer and his father Carl and learn to dominate. Full moon. It's about the only place Carl Kinzer hasn't won with a sprint card yet. Well, see, they've let the gates open. Uh, they've come in from turn one and turn four, and pretty soon, just by the flags down there, the middle gate's going to open, everybody's going to go rushing down in there. That's the great thing about the Outlaw shows. You get right up next to them, you get to meet them. It is, that is one thing unique about the World of Outlaws. They get to every nook and cranny of the United States, you know, clear up in the Northwest and places, and uh, people get down in the grandstands, meet their heroes, and get the autographs. Well, Steve Kinzer had a big night tonight. Let's go downstairs and visit with the King. And there's no more competitive driver than this guy. He's won 413 of these 1,200 events, but 414 will have to wait. Steve, you look real disappointed. Well, you know, we, we can't be disappointed out of the last five races. We ran a top four and, and had one win out of them. And yeah, we're sneaking up on them. We're, uh, we're going to be right there. We're going to get this uh, Quaker State car where it gets up there and starts winning some races. Uh, we've gained a lot the last couple weeks. And... Uh, uh, we're right there. We're just off just a little bit, but uh, we've been pretty good every place we've been. So uh, uh, we still got some work to do, but uh, we'll get there. Well, there was a point in time when you were running in fifth, and you had a heck of a battle going on. Lap cars everywhere. You had to believe you had a real legitimate shot at winning this thing. Yeah, I, I had a decent shot. I was a little bit tight uh, around the bottom, and, and a little bit actually a little bit tight off the top too. But uh, we got trapped in a couple lap cars, made a couple bad moves, and uh, let Mark and Sammy get away from us. And after that, we was just running for third position there at the end of the race. Now you move on, and you said you can gain a lot of experience here. Well, you know, we just uh, we've been really working on a motor program a little bit. It's something that uh, has been pretty new to us. Uh, you know, I've never done this. Uh, uh, worked on a motor program, and uh, we're coming along pretty good. I think uh, I think uh, I think we're just going to get better all year. Big Green and Steve Kinzer will win again. They finished third here tonight, guys. Of course, Steve never having worked on a motor program because his uncle Carl used to always do it for him. And it's a big thing to fight off and chew and try to get straightened out on a tour as competitive as the Pennzoil World of Outlaws. We're not done yet. Don't go away. Well, with everybody let into the infield, you can be sure Lanny Edwards ain't going to close the concession stand here just yet. Now open for business down there. Dave Blaney's not headed over there yet. He's over with the crew. Bobby Gerald? That's right. Dave's got to sell some t-shirts now after a fourth place finish and uh, a good run. Dave, at the beginning of the race, you were coming like a house of fire. Yeah, I don't know what... Uh what went on there early on we had car plenty good enough to win we we could roll around the bottom top whatever i mean uh i i don't, I don't know i felt like i had to stagger close up or something went on but uh, we just got horrible slide and push and slide and push and uh backed up yep. now what's next for you guys well in oklahoma next week tulsa and oklahoma city and uh just go to the next one start over but i can't be too disappointed I, We've been pretty close uh, the whole time, and uh, our new team's floating along good here with, you know, Vibran, U.S. Print, and everybody, and uh, pretty happy overall. You know the cool thing, guys, just like we uh, we showed you earlier, Dave gets to go back in that lounge now, turn on the air conditioning, maybe microwave a pizza or something like that. <laughs> and watch basketball games. I know Blaney now. He's also been active lately behind the wheel of a lot of other things. Arca race cars in Atlanta and Indy Racing League cars. Dave Blaney, the Buckeye Bullock, one of the quickest. That's your winning car tonight. Come back with us. We are back to Devil's Bowl Speedway here, Mesquite, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Wrapping up the 24th annual Spring Nationals with the World of Outlaws just about 20 years ago. They kicked off this tour for the first time ever here back in 1978. Spring Nationals weekend back then as well. Well, let's head back downstairs one more time. I'm with Andy Hillenberg, and Andy, we were talking just a moment ago. This has always been a good racetrack to you. Fifth place is good, but it's not great again. Nah, you know, this track has been good to us. Um, we've been good here, you know, an awful lot of times. It seems like uh, a couple times we broke or whatever, but uh, tonight, I'll tell you what, an awesome race. It's just uh, uh, unfortunate we were at the back half. Of it. We just, uh, I think we were the same speed all night, you know, and then those guys got faster, and boy, it's hard to hold them off, so. Um, I guess we'll just take a top five tonight, and, and uh, I'm happy for STP and all the people that help us, and uh, we'll go home and try her again. That had to be a pretty good view from the driver's seat there. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was an awesome race. I just wish I'd have been a part of it. Uh, uh, Steve and Blaney and, and Mark, they were they were putting on a good show, and then here comes Sammy, you know, and he blasted up through there. So, uh, man, it should have been a good show. I'm, I hope everybody enjoyed it. But. Uh, I tell you, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tough program. It takes a lot of people to, uh, you know, to make everything happen. So we'll just be happy with fifth tonight. And guys, I think we'll be happy with an awesome racetrack uh, and a race as well tonight. Spring Nationals in the book.
Seven top fives will help him out in the point standings. Let's show you that right now. There you see Andy sits right there in second place. Victory for Mark Kinzer will help separate that a little bit. Blaney, Hodden Shield, and Danny Lasoski holding on inside the top five. He's actually tied now with Steve Kinzer with the points. Sammy and Jeff Swindell running seventh and eighth. Greg Hodnett and Joe Gertie running out the top ten. Bobby Gerald, what do you think? Well, guys, I tell you what, if you're the outlaw competitors, maybe you're starting to get a little concerned. Mark Kinzer won last night. Mark Kinzer wins tonight. He swept at Paris. That's four wins. He leads the points. Things starting to get into that Mark Kinzer pattern of dominance. Just a closing comment and a thought, and I'm sure it's on the minds of all the outlaws competitors as they get set to go to Tulsa next week. What do you think, Brad? Time to get worried yet? Yeah, I, I think they're starting to wonder, you know, what do they have to do to beat this guy? And like I said, uh, Carl, just one step ahead of the competition. Well, Mark Kinzer is also driving on the Craftsman Truck Series with the NASCAR Tour. He's going to try that again in Phoenix, Arizona, coming up in a few weeks. The fans filing out of here. They've already got their T-shirts. They're on their way home. Well, Brad, you ready to do it again? I'm ready. This was a great race, great show. Fox Sports Network will be bringing you more live World of Outlaws later this summer. We will have a Thursday night race from the famed Knoxville Nationals. Should be a great show. For Bobby Gerald and Dave Reef, my good buddy Brad Doty. Don't forget, extra large, okay? Okay, got that. Okay. I'm Ralph Shaheen. For everybody downstairs in the truck, you guys did a great job. Fox Sports Network saying so long from Mesquite, Texas, Devil's Bowl Speedway, just outside of Dallas, where Mark Kinzer has won and his maximum working back 5M once again. So long, everybody.